Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We welcome Good morning. each of you who have come today <coughs> to share in our celebration of Shabbat, to share in the light of the candles and the songs and dances of rejoicing, to break the peace and create harmony in our homes, to rest and renew ourselves in the important work to come, to give thanks for good health and freedom, to seek faith and courage, to remember always our heritage. Let us bask in the Sabbath rays of comfort as we join with family and friends in this celebration. Amen. Those are for tomorrow. Those are for tomorrow. Thank you. No, it's all right. Bye. <laughs> all right. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I'm sorry for the winter season. We're going to do things earlier at this time because so I can make it home to my own temple because I live 100 miles away. So now we'll light the Holy Sabbath lamps, candles. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments commanded us concerning the lighting of the Holy Sabbath candles. Amen. Baruch Hashem, Kedi Shalom, Mitzvot, Sabbath, Yivonu, Lahad, Lignar, Shal Shabbos, Kodesh. Yedi Nefesh Aparachamon Mishai Chavdecha Every now and then I share a song with you that's not maybe traditional, it's not part of our liturgy. I don't know why, it's a song I've known for quite a few years, well over a decade. i aware of this song that Amy Rottenberg wrote. And just recently I was thinking about it and it touched me. Every time I hear it, it kind of makes me cry. And so I want to share with you this very inspiring and beautiful song. It tells a very nice story. So uh, follow along. There are a few Jewish words in here that um, I'll explain. That people know a yeshiva is a Jewish school. Rosh yeshiva, Rosh means head, is the, the head rabbi of the yeshiva. Uh, a Yiddish word, Zaydi, means, means grandfather. Most people know that. And, um, and Gedolim means great ones, meaning you know, certain very famous rabbis become very great and famous, and even to the point where kids might trade cards with their pictures, and that's kind of what the story is about, trading one card for another over a long time. <clears throat> I'll apologize, my voice isn't so nice, but try to listen to the words. We grew up together in New York City. Oh, how the time has flown by. We were inseparable, closer than brothers, my best friend Sammy and I. We'd play by the oak tree in back of my house, tossing a ball to and fro. Each, of one, each one of us dreaming, pretending to be the great Joe DiMaggio. One day we each bought a package of tops and opened them under the tree. Look, Sam, I got Joe DiMaggio's card. 
he was so jealous of me. I lovingly hid it deep inside my drawer, where it would be safe as can be. And I vowed I would keep it forever and ever. It was so precious to me. It was so very precious to me. When we grew older and left for Yeshiva, a change could be seen from the start. Sam loved to study while I loved to daydream. Slowly we drifted apart. I watched him grow in his learning and faith with a mixture of envy and pride. I really realized with sadness no more could it be my best friend Sammy and I. Many years passed as I watched my own children laying outside in the yard. I remembered the friendship of long, long ago and the great Joe DiMaggio's car. Collectors would come, they would knock at my door. Letters arrived in the mail. We'll pay half a million, your card, it is one of a kind. I'd answer them, it's not for sale. I'd answer them, it's not for sale. I'd read in the papers from times to time of events in the life of my friend. He became Rosh Yeshiva of our old school and now was a leader of men. But there was a fire that ravaged his school I knew it just might break his heart. So I reached in my drawer and said my goodbyes to the great Joe DiMaggio's car. One day my own grandson came home from yeshiva holding a car that was new. Look, Zadie Reb Shmuel is one of the gedolim and I'm giving his card to you. I lovingly hid it deep inside my drawer where it would be safe as can be. And I vowed I would keep it forever and ever. It is so precious to me. It is so very precious to me. That's the song from maybe Rockford. Isn't it nice? Thank you so much. I'm sorry, my voice isn't so nice. There's a video of it that's quite nice. Yeah. I, I thought people would enjoy it. All right. Yes, Mechu Hashomayim. Yes, Mechu Hashomayim. Yes, Mechu Hashomayim. Visagel Haaretz, Yismechu Hashamayim. Let the heavens rejoice, Yismechu Hashamayim. And let the earth be glad, Yismechu Hashamayim. Visagel Haaretz, Hayyiram Hayyam, Yiram Hayyam. Sing all the sea and all that's therein. Yeram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Umalawa. Hayyiram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Umalawa. Yeram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Yeram Hayam, Umalawa. Yismu Hashamaye. Hayesmechu Hashamayim. Hayesmechu Hashamayim. Visagel Haaretz. 
even though it's a little early, we're welcoming the Sabbath. With that great medieval hymn, Oh, Lecha, do come, my beloved Lee Cross. Kala, oh, to greet the bright Pene, Pene Shabbos, Pene Shabbos Nekavila. Let us receive the face of the Sabbath. Shamor v'zachor b'diborecha dihish miyanu kel hamiyu chadashem. Let us receive the face. Let us welcome the Sabbath bright. Observe and remember in a single command the one God. Ah, announce to us the Lord is one. His name is one for the fame, for the glory, and for the praise. Let Come, my beloved Lee Cross, Kala, oh, to greet the bright Pene, Shabbos, Nekala, let us welcome the Sabbath. Come, let us go to who meet the Sabbath, for it is the source of blessing from the very Beginning it was ordained last, creation first in God's plan. Lecha, Dodi, come, my beloved Likras, Kala, O to greet the bright Pene, Shabbos, Yominus multi brotsi, ahai vi yes adonai tarinsi, al yadi hishbehen partsi venisme kahabin agila, lecha dohudi lehi kraska halo, pene hisha bosne kabla, lecha dohudi lehi kraska halo, pene hisha bosne kabla. Boi v'shalom ateres b'alo Gam berino v'simcha u'u v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'
Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, the King of the universe, who brings us night and day and blesses us with the light of the sun, the moon, and the stars, all of them that serve you with joy. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the God who lives and endures forever and ever, and who brings night and day. You've loved us with eternal love, and demonstrated this to us by giving us your Torah and its commandments. For they are our life and the length of our days, and then we will meditate day and night. And you will never remove your love from us. Blessed art thou, O Lord. O heva mo Yisrael, who loves his people. Amen. And now we say the most important words of the whole Hebrew Bible. From Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you today should be upon your heart. You should teach them diligently to your children, and you should speak of them when you're sitting at home and when you go on a journey, when you lie down, when you rise up. You should bind them for a sign on your hand that they should be four frontlets be between your eyes, and you should write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Almighty God, we remember as you took us out of Egypt and led us to the Red Sea, and there we sang before you. <laughs> Nedar Bakodesh No Rossi he loves O Jose Fella Who is like you, O Lord among the mighty, who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, all inspiring and renowned, doing wonders, and that thy children saw thy majesty as thou didst part the sea before Moses. This is my God, they shouted, and they said Adonai Imloch Olam Moed, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. And it is said, Indeed, the Lord hath delivered Jacob and hath rescued him from a stronger power. Blessed art thou, O Lord, Goal Yisrael, who has redeemed Israel. Almighty God, let us go to sleep tonight in peace and wake up refreshed and new so we can serve you and sh surround us with the shelter of your peace. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Haporesu kashalom aleinu v'al kol amo Yisrael v'al Yerushalayim. Amen. Who spreads the shelter of peace over us and over all thy people Israel and the whole world and over Jerusalem. Amen. And now a reading from Exodus 31. V'shamaru v'nei Yisrael es hashavos Lasos as Hashabos Lidorosam Brisolam Baini Uvain Bene Yisrael O Siliaholam Kishishis Yamim Oswadinoi as the Shemayim Vyesares. Uvayom hashvi shavas vayinopash. And the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. as a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Then six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. On the seventh day he ceased from work and rested. Today also happens to be the new moon, the beginning of the new month of Cheshvan. We'll, we'll mention that as well in our liturgy. O Lord, open now my lips, that my mouth may declare thy praise. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, and God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God of Sarah, Becca, Rachel, and Leah. Great, mighty, and revered God, sublime God, most high God, who bestows loving kindness, not master of all things, who remembers the good deeds of our ancestors, and will graciously bring a redeemer to their children's children for the sake of your name and love. O King, supporter, savior, and shield, blessed art thou, O Lord. Magain Abraham, the shield of Abraham. Thou, O Lord, art mighty forever. Thou revivest the dead. Thou art powerful to save. You cause the wind to blow and the rain to fall. You sustain the living with kindness, and you revive the dead with great mercy. You support all who fall, and you heal the sick, and you set the captives free. And you keep the faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like unto thee, Lord of power? Who resembles thee, O King, thou who bringest death and restorest life and causes salvation to flourish? 
Indeed, thou art faithful to revive the dead. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Mechaye Hamesim, who revives the dead. You are holy, and your name is holy, and the holy beings praise you daily. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the holy God. You have sanctified to yourself the seventh day, marking the end of creation of heaven and earth. You have blessed above all days and hallowed it above all festivals, as is written in your Torah in Genesis 2. By Hashemayim Voretz Bechal Tzvam By Chalohim B'yamashviim Lach Toa Sheoasa By Yishbos By Yomashviim Mikom Lach Toa Sheoasa By Borech Elohim As Yom Hashviim By Kadesh Oso Kivo Shavas Mikom Lach Toa Sheboro Lehim Lasos Excuse me. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their host. On the seventh day, God had completed all the work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work in which he had been engaged. Then God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it he rested from all his work which he had created and left for us to do. God and God of our ancestors, please accept our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant us a share in your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. And purify our hearts to serve you in truth. And in your gracious love, Lord our God, grant us that we may keep thy holy Sabbath as a heritage. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the Kadesh HaShabbos, who sanctifies the Sabbath. Be pleased, O Lord, with thy people, and favor their prayer, and restore the worship to your innermost sanctuary, and speedily accept our offerings and prayers with gracious love, and may the worship of thy people be ever pleasing to thee. Our God and God of our ancestors, May the remembrance of us, our Father, the Messiah, Son of David, your servant, of Jerusalem, your holy city, and all the people of the house of Israel, ascend and come up and be accepted before you for salvation, and for goodness, for grace, kindness, and mercy, for life, and for peace. On this day of Rosh Chodesh, the new moon, the new month, remember us this day, Lord our God, for goodness. Be mindful of us for blessing, and save us for a good life. And with the promise of salvation and mercy, spare us and have pity on us and be gracious to us. And, have, and save us, for we look unto thee, for thou art a gracious and merciful God and King. And may our eyes behold thy return and mercy to Zion. Blessed art thou, O Lord. who restores his divine presence to Zion. Modi Menach We ever thank thee, who art the Lord our God and the God of our ancestors. You are the strength of our life and the, our saving shield. And every generation will thank thee and recount thy praise for our lives which are in your charge and for our souls which are in your care and for your miracles which are daily with us. And for your continual wonders and favors, evening, morning, and noon. Good one whose mercies never fail, merciful ones whose kindness is never one whose kindness has never ceased. You have always been our hope, and for all of these acts, may your name, our King, be blessed and exalted forever and ever. And all the living shall ever thank you and sincerely praise and bless your great and good name. Sincerely, good God, thou art always our salvation and our help. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Your name is the good one to you is fitting to give thanks. Our God and God of our ancestors, Baruchino, bless us with the threefold blessing, <coughs> written in your Torah by the hand of Moses, your servant, to be spoken by Aaron and sons, your holy people, the priests, as it is said. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord grant you favor and give you peace. O grant abundant peace to thy people forever, for thou art the King and Lord of peace. May it please thee to bless us and to bless all thy people with thy peace at all times and all hours. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Amen. Blesses his people with peace and the whole world with peace. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find favor before thee, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. <coughs> O Seh Shalom de Ramal, may he who makes peace in the highest heavens, who ya Seh Shalom Aleinu, may he make peace for us. We all call Israel and for the whole world. We maru, and let us say, We maru, Amen. Ya Seh Shalom, Ya Seh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, we all call Israel. Yahaseh shalom, yahaseh shalom, 
Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. Yahase Shalom, Yahase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. Yahase Shalom, Yahase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. Vimeru, Vimeru, Amen. It's funny, we just last week finished the Torah with Deuteronomy, and we started again Genesis. And now we're in the second reading of Genesis, the story of Noah, and the story of the Tower of Babel, and the beginning of the story of Abraham. And it's so fascinating to me because these are the times when rabbis look forward to, because we have so much to say. Everybody knows about Noah and the flood and the Tower of Babel. These are stories that every kid learns in Sunday school. So the rabbis look forward to this, and I saw one rabbi on Twitter, on the internet, she was writing, I'm trying to think, what am I going to say about Parsha Noah? And I just I couldn't understand. Like, this is, this is the easiest time to talk with. Sometimes there's so much to say, you've got to try to figure out how to keep it, you know, how, how to... We only have so much time how to, to limit it, but she, she couldn't even think of one thing to say. I don't understand. I, I, guess, um, I guess that's why she has a better job than me. Or some of I have a wonderful job here. I'm very blessed to be here. And Because uh, maybe she thinks more than I do, and I, I just talk without <laughs> thinking. But I remember a lot of things I learned in yeshiva, and a lot of things that uh, we can think about you know, we learn these stories of Noah and the ark and the animals when we're little kids. And we sometimes think they're just children's stories and we become adults. So although those children's stories are nice and give us a warm feeling in our heart, there's sometimes deeper messages that we can find. And there's also an aspect of the Jewish faith that we use the original Hebrew language the Bible was written in, that we can sometimes have insights that are sometimes lost in translation aspect of that, of course the simple meaning is generally how it's translated, but sometimes there are deeper meanings that we can find from the text by having the original Hebrew words and comparing them to other words. Now, one word is the word word. Um, we know in Christianity they talk a lot about the word, whether the Bible is the word or you know, the word became flesh in Christianity, we, we can say really anyone who becomes, one rabbi who I know, he said, anyone who dedicates themselves to Torah, Rabbi Bart Sadok said this from Tennessee, really is an example of the word becoming flesh. That's, that's what Rabbi Bart Sadok said. Just, but there are other things about words. And, but a fascinating thing, there's a few words for the word word, I'm saying word a lot. But one of the words for word in Hebrew is teva. It's a word for word. But there's another meaning of the word teva that we have in this week's Torah reading, and that's Noah's Ark. The Ark is called the teva. So what can we learn by the fact that an Ark and a word are the same thing? The same word is used for an Ark, which doesn't really mean a box. Uh, a boat usually means like a box. Here is obviously a boat. There are other words for boat in Hebrew. Um, usually, teva, in this sense, an ark, means a box. Um, and yet, it's the same word for word. Are our words a teva, an ark? Before we get into that, I had another teaching I want to share from Rabbi Hudner, who was a great rabbi, passed away in the 70s or the early 80s, I guess, uh, from the Chaim Berlin Yeshiva, a very famous yeshiva in Brooklyn. And Rabbi Hudner, he pointed out there are twice in the Bible that we see construction work. And not in the Bible, in the Torah. In the Bible, we also have the Temple later and other examples of construction work. But in the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, the Chumash, we have two examples. We have, the, we have Noah's Ark, and we have the Tabernacle. And Rabbi Hudner said, 
anytime we build a building, and he says, what's the building par excellence of Judaism is really the home, but what do we take home? Where do we get what we furnish our home spiritually with? We go to the study halls, the synagogues and the yeshivas, and build those buildings so we can have a place to sit and study and receive God's words. So we have something to take home with us. It's not just, God isn't just relegated to synagogue and we go home and do whatever we want. We are supposed to take God with us. That's what it says. It says in the book of, of Exodus, build me a sanctuary and I will live in them. Why doesn't it say I will live in them and it? Why doesn't it say I will live in the temple? Because God doesn't live in the temple. God lives in us. We go to the temple to learn about God so we can take home, God home with us. And that's really what we learn with this Sabbath service. We go to synagogue and we pray, but then we go home and have the meal, and God's there with us when we're eating, and his angels are with us. And that's what's really going on. But Rabbi Hutner said a yeshiva could be like that, or really any seminary, whatever your tradition is, or any house of worship in a sense, could be one or two. Could be the tabernacle or could be Noah's Ark. And really, in a way, it's kind of both. Meaning some folks, they're so lost out in the world, and they're going to drown in the flood of the world. And then they come into their synagogue or their church or their mosque, their study hall, their house of worship. And it's like Noah's Ark saving them from the, from, from the waters of the flood. Or some people are already... They're already saved, so to speak, but they go to the, to the tabernacle to become more spiritually elevated. But in a certain sense, the ark itself is an example of that. We learn a lesson from the ark that maybe we don't even learn from the tabernacle. And the thing is, it might not just be the synagogue or the church or the mosque or the temple, wherever we go, the house of worship. Because we learn, as we said a few minutes ago, that the word for ark is the same word as the word for word. Um, Rabbi Heschel, A.J. Heschel from, from JTS, he was very famous, he mar marched together with Dr. Martin Luther King. He wrote some very beautiful books. He said the Sabbath is our most beautiful cathedral. That's what he wrote. And, but it's not just the Sabbath. Meaning a, a, we can have a sanctuary in time just as we have a sanctuary in space, just like we build a building, we can create an atmosphere just in time by having holidays, special days that we celebrate and observe. And by observing them, we enter into a different wor world. But even, even more simply than that, that we, something we can reach any time and any place is the word. And in my tradition. We pray three times a day, and we try to spend as much of our free time as we can studying God's Word when we're not praying and not working and not do, you know, doing other things we have to do, or whatever obligations we have. When we have a few minutes, we're supposed to be in the Word, whether it's a word of prayer or a word of, of study. Prayer is when we talk to God, and study is when God talks to us, as the rabbi said. But we have to realize words are not just something we say. Each word of prayer and study, each word on its own, is like an ark. It's like Noah's ark. Meaning we can enter into the word. It says by Noah's ark, make a light. God said, make a light in the ark. Something that's going to illuminate the ark. Some kind of a whether it's an artificial light or a natural light, doesn't matter, there's a dis discussion of that. But the point is, is that our words can't be empty. Our words have to be full of light. That's what it says, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov explains in the Baal Shem Tov. When it says make a light for the word, for the ark, it also means make a light for your word, illuminate your words. They sh every word you say shouldn't just be lip service. But it should be filled with the light of God. Even when you're talking to your friends, and you're friendly and you're happy, it's also a mitzvah. It's also, you can illuminate those words. There's something else we could say about illuminating the word. 
and about entering into the Word. What does it mean that the ark, the Word is an ark? If we said that people go to the tabernacle to be lifted up. But if we read what the Bible says about the ark, those very waters that drowned everybody else outside the ark, the very thing that was going to destroy you on the outside, that's what lifted the ark up, the Bible says. That means when we enter into the Word of God, all those things that we thought were going to ruin us, were going to depress us, were going to upset us, were going to ruin our lives, whatever it is, when we're in the Word, when we enter in the Word like as if it's Noah's Ark, then those very things that were going to destroy us actually lift us up. And so that's the message, I think, of Noah's Ark. Thank you. The power of the words. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, my rabbi, Rabbi Tao from Brooklyn, the Caliber Rebbe, it's very sad, he has Lou Gehrig's disease, he can't move, but with his eyes, every day he writes beautiful words of Torah. And he, he sends me things to translate that he sends out to hundreds, maybe thousands of people around the world. And uh, this week he wrote just a brief idea, because after Noah's Ark we have the story of the Tower of Babel. And it's interesting, what does he have to say about the Tower of Babel? The Tower of Babel, first of all, the, the Bible in Leviticus tells us, don't speak slander, it's forbidden, it's a sin to speak slander and gossip, or words that hurt people's feelings. We have to be so careful with the words we say. And Rabbi Tal pointed out, he said that his great-grandfather, Rabbi Isaac of Kamarna, was a big holy saint. Rabbi Isaac of Kamarna wrote that he had a dream once that he said people suffer because they're not careful about the way they speak. And, and to, to publicize this, to let people know how important it is to be careful the way you speak and how that changes the atmosphere around you. And he explained this, in this briefly in the Talmud, but he said that the Chassam Sofer was a Rabbi Schreiber, a very great rabbi, about 200 years ago from Hungary. The Chassam Sofer said in a eulogy for a great rabbi, he said that the words we speak, when we talk, right, it's, it, the breath is coming out of our mouths, right? There's carbon dioxide that comes out when we exhale. That's coming out when we speak. He said that air that comes out of our mouth if our words are holy, that brings holiness into the atmosphere. If our words are not, it brings impurity, into, it pollutes the atmosphere. He said that it goes up into the clouds and the rain. And when the rain comes down and, and, and food grows from that rain, the food is either tainted and polluted by our bad words, or it's blessed and sanctified by our good and holy words and our, our encouraging and happy words. The very words we say actually change the atmosphere around us, even in a way we could call scientific to a certain extent. And so that's why we have to be so careful the words we're saying. And, he, and so Rabbi Taub, the Kalav Rebbe, he points out, he said, look at the Tower of Babel, they were wicked people. And so they were all speaking one language so they could gossip a lot. And so God was like, you know, I'm going to have mercy because I don't want to pollute this atmosphere. I don't want to pollute this beautiful, the, you know, the rain and then the food that grows from the rain and everything. I'm going to change all their languages. This way they can't say as much gossip as they could if they all spoke the same language. But the thing is, if we're all speaking the same language of goodness and holiness and happiness, and we go into the words, like we said, and illuminate our words, then those words will lift us up. We go into the words, we go into the ark, like Noah's ark. And in that way, we'll be blessed. Now we're back into a regular schedule. No more holidays till Hanukkah. We have, it's just a regular mundane, everyday work week. But what seems mundane, we can really uplift. That's what I said before. We read on Yom Kippur, Achare, which means after. Doesn't matter as much what you do on Yom Kippur, though that's very important. But what do you take home from Yom Kippur? whether it's a sanctuary in, in time or in space or in the very words we say, do we bring that and recognize that there's only one God who does everything and is involved in everything and, and fills everything and surrounds everything? And that means that 
This moment now can be just as holy as Yom Kippur. Every word we say, even when we're talking to our friends, and it seems like as long as if we're friendly and we're not fighting and we're not, you know, annoying and we're nice to people. I mean, I, sometimes there's times when you have to speak up because you have to speak up because things are going bad and you got to protect yourself. I'm saying just in a regular situation where everything's good and people are just complaining is that it pollutes the atmosphere. But when we talk happy th talks and we have a smile, even when it doesn't seem so easy to do, and, and talk about good, happy things that make people happy, it changes our whole atmosphere. And then we can go into our words. Every word can be sanctified and uplifted and enlightened. And we should be worthy to have that light and spread it. Because one little candle, you can't chase away darkness. Remember what the Christopher said, you know, don't curse the darkness, light one candle, and the darkness goes away. Let's illuminate our words with light, with happiness, with goodness, and in that way we'll be blessed to continue to have a wonderful new year and many more years to come. God bless. Good Shabbos.